What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. We actually have a change of pace for this video and it's gonna be full of shop upgrades and projects in this video. We have the whole gang up here, Minnie, Max, the kids, Cassie. Milo's at the house because he runs away, but we also added two new additions. Kids, what did we get yesterday? We got some shop cats. Yeah, some shop cats. So a very important part of having an efficient garage is having something that can kill rats and bugs. So what did we get? Oh yeah, two little kitty cats. We have Molly and Polly over there. But in this video, we have a ton of projects to do. Most of them are laid out over here and they're all shop or garage upgrades that you might be able to do in yours as well. You don't have to have a huge shop, but this is gonna make working up here a lot better. We have some insulation, a full solar system, much needed lighting upgrades for the shop. We have a pressure washer, an e-bike, a safe, and a bunch of other little things that we're gonna knock out in this video. So let's get started. So the first project we're gonna knock out is gonna be adding some lights to the shop. This is something we've talked about in multiple videos. Whenever we put a vehicle in here, the lighting just kind of, it's, it's not very good at all. There's a ton of shadows, and especially on camera when we're trying to film, it just doesn't really look that good. So hopefully this is gonna fix it by putting in four new high bay lights from Hyperlight. So these are actually really, really neat. Cassie's gonna open it up, but they're 150 watts each, LED, and they're around 80 bucks, which is not bad at all, because I was planning, I'm trying to find a good lighting solution. I could add more of those, diffuse lighting, but they're about like 90, 90 something a piece, and honestly, they don't do that good. So here's one of them, as you can tell, that is a monster. And we've actually already in, like temporarily installed one over in this corner. So if we unplug it, you can just kind of look at the shadows. So even just one light, That's such a big difference. one light does a phenomenal job. Now we've messed around with this one before. If we angle it down, because it is a high bay light, it's a little too intense. It's too intense and then it gives shadows coming from the bottom. So like under my eye, like everything, it just oh, like yeah. shadows everything under. So what we found a great way to do is actually angle the light up so it bounces off the roof, diffuses by itself, and comes down here. One other big factor was that I wanted to stay with LED lights. Now in my situation, since we have a full 200 amp panel, I don't necessarily need it, but I like saving money and LED <laughs> operates go. cheaper. So. If you're gonna install new lights onto an existing light circuit, we're gonna go ahead and check, make sure we have the amperage for it, and I'm gonna show you how to install them. So I know a lot of you guys aren't electricians, but this is a very cheap multimeter that has an amp clamp, and all you do is stick this around a wire and it'll tell you how many amps are being drawn. So we're gonna go right here. It's on DC, so we're gonna swap it over to AC, however we do that. Right there, AC. Now, we know that these lights are on a single breaker. So I can go over here and let's say, find out which one it is. Right there, we have a 20 amp breaker for all the lights in here. So we are gonna tag into this 20 amp breaker, but first we need to see how many amps are being drawn. So right here is our hot wire. Gassy's gonna go ahead and clamp it on there. And we can tell that our current lights are only using 1.6 amps. We can verify that by turning it off and back on. So 1.6 amps out of a 20 amp circuit means we have ton of room for extra lighting. But these high bay 150 watt LED bulbs are only gonna draw right around 1.3 amps each. If you ever need to figure out how to calculate that, you do your wattage, 150 watts, divided by the voltage. So in our case, 115, 110, whatever you wanna call it, gives us our amp draw. So adding four of these lights is only gonna bump it up to about five amps, which we are perfectly good to go. So now we get some of our electrical tools, start wiring up a switch and daisy chaining these lights together. I'll go ahead and punch out the box, get a wire run over to this side of the door. And then we are going to install a new outlet box over here. We're gonna have one switch for the lights, one switch for something else we're doing later in the video, and then an outlet. I think they like that. <laughs> it's actually not that dark. I really don't want to turn this into a full wiring video, but I want to show you guys what I've done. The box is in, we have an outlet and two switches already installed. The power coming in is splitting to all three of these evenly, and then our neutral is gonna be tied here. So these switches are only gonna cut like the power side, and in most cases, black is hot, white is neutral, green is ground. So the switches are only gonna kill the hot side, 
we're gonna have to tie into the neutral over here shared on the outlet, and then the ground also shares between all three of these. So if you have any like questions about wiring like this, there's plenty of information online, but make sure you know what you're doing. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, just hire an electrician. Stuff like this won't be too expensive. Now the good thing is that these Hyperlite lights do plug into your standard outlet. So what I'm pretty much doing is making a switched outlet circuit that's gonna go up here on the roof. That way I don't have to crawl up there to unplug them to either turn them on or turn them off. So with this done, it's time to run the wire up to where we want our first outlet, which is probably gonna be right there, then continue it up along the roof. And I guess at this point, the switches are off. There's nothing going out to them. We can go ahead and turn our breaker on. And if we did everything right, we won't have any explosions and we won't hear a loud pop. And just like that, the wiring for the new lights is finally done. Cassie, are you ready to hit it? Heck yeah, ready? Oh yeah. Boom, so as you can tell, it completely fills out the shop. It looks so much better. I think having them face up was a great idea because we don't get any camera glare down here. The past few video guys, I am sorry, since we moved here, the, the lighting in, in the shop has been pretty bad. So working on the vehicles, I know a lot of the camera quality was down, but now with these with these lights, we can actually see what we're doing, and, and hopefully, it's nice that we can actually see what we're doing too, not just on video, but like in live person. Action. Oh yeah, so it's crazy. If you guys are looking for some kind of light to light up a garage, shop, carport, really anything, these Hyperlite, the 150 watts, are incredibly bright. It actually turned out really good. So this is how it was before, and that is after. That is a crazy difference. I don't even. We don't even need those old lights in here for it to still be. No, not at but, all. All right, so lighting is done. Glad we've done that. I should have done that months ago. But it is time to move on to a Jeep garage idea. So everybody's probably already idea. seen this product <laughs> idea. Little door hangers. So we have a lot of clutter in the shop, as you can tell, Too including much. cats now. But we need somewhere to keep the doors off the ground. So Cassie's doors have been chilling over there. I think we're gonna go ahead and hang them over on this wall behind Mike's lift. I actually picked these up on Amazon a while ago. Not too expensive, if I remember correctly. I think it was like 35 or 45 bucks for a set of four. And I know there's a lot of DIY options out there, but these looked pretty nice. They looked sturdy, and I like the fact that they're powder coated so they won't rust. And luckily, we have a nice two by four here that we're just gonna tie them into. So if you are gonna do it in a garage, of course, make sure you're, you know, putting it on a stud. Well, and just like that, the doors are now off the ground in a spot that we're never gonna be able to get to again. Perfect. <laughs> so, if you are worried about scratching your doors, one thing I would do is either put some foam on this cup, because this is like a, a metal bracket. So if you're removing a bunch, I could see this metal scratching your paint. Throw some foam on there or some plastic dip and you'll be good to go. So luckily that was a very easy one. Time for the next one. Before we hop into the next shop project, I wanna take a real quick break and have a little bit of fun. We're gonna unbox this Aerial Rider X-Class 52 volt electric bike. Now I've never owned an electric bike before, but I think this thing is gonna be really cool. Not only just kind of bomb around the property, but we can also take this thing off road. Now Aerial Rider did send this out for, you know, for us to play with, have some fun, and test it out off-road. I know a lot of people aren't gonna be interested in an electric bike, but for those of you that are, whether you're driving it to work because the gas prices are crazy now, or if you're looking for something to kind of drive around at a campsite off-road, this might be a good fit. So we're gonna unbox it, let it charge, probably mess with some of those other upgrades while this charges, and then test it out and see how much fun this thing can be. Right out of the box, it looks like there's only a few things to assemble, which is not a big deal at all. But the big thing, the best thing about this bike so far is the fact that it's red. So if it's like any other 
of the red vehicles here, it's gonna do great off-road. So let's go ahead and grab all this stuff off, start assembling it, let it charge. This thing's gonna be a ripper. Just looking at it, it looks like a dirt bike. I should probably leave some of this padding on, knowing my driving skills. Might be a good idea just to leave all that on. E-bike assembly was super simple. All we had to do is pop the handlebars on, the headlight, the front fender, and the front tire, align the rear chain, and then we gave it a full charge, and it is ready to rip. Now, the plan was to start some of those other projects during the charge cycle, but I had to go pick up a couple things over there for a future video, but we will get back to that in a Jeep video. So, I really wanna wait until Cassie gets back so we can go ahead and like really test this out, but I am curious, so we're gonna take it on a real quick test drive. So a real quick overview before we take this out, we have a kickstand, of course, but there's two different modes to drive this thing. We have the pedal assist, we have one through five, five meaning that's like the most assist motorized. We can lower that down. So we can ride this bike normal, we can leave it on the motorized assist or turn it off. And of course, we also do have, I should probably hold that. That's our little lever right there for our gas. So let's take it for a spin. Okay, I'm lazy, I want some assist. There we go. You can really hear that motor kicking in. We'll bump it up to a two. A Little bit faster. Oh yeah, we're going. Now we're gonna turn that assist off. And this is hard to drive with one hand on the GoPro. Maybe we'll take this thing on the road and see what the top speed is. So it turns out that this thing does have a speed limiter. We just took it up to the shop, removed the speed limiter. I think it put it up to like 60 something. So we're gonna go for a real quick road test. Here we go. That's a big boy. <laughs> All right, so we were able to get up to, I got up to 40 going downhill, but steady flat road. This thing was able to top out at 36 miles per hour with my big old self. So I'm excited for Cassie to try this out. She is going to fly on this. The big thing was I had to raise the speed limiter. Um, I still have two bars of battery left and we now have 19 miles on this unit. I think when they shipped it, it had like one for testing. So 18 miles, uh, about a third of the battery and I've just been completely ripping on it, full throttle pretty much. One of these days, I'm pretty curious, I'm gonna take this and see how far we can make it. I'm gonna see if we can drive it all the way to Mike's house. He's down in Moore. So that's like 20 miles but according to this, we should be able to make it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this recharge for now. We're gonna move on to the next shop project, which is actually adding water up to the shop. It's just gonna be a rain collection system with a pump and lines in here, because I'm not gonna drink it. It's mostly for washing our hands, operating a pressure washer up here, and it'd just be nice to have some type of water up here in the shop. The house is on a well and we're like 20 feet up here and I don't want to deal with having like a boost pump. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's get the bike up and move on to the next project. Well, it looks like we picked the perfect day for this next project. So like I mentioned, we are using a barrel as a rainwater collection system with a pump, a filter, and all of that to have water up in the shop. As you guys can tell, I had to go ahead and shave that Freedom beard off, have a reserve drill coming up soon. So. I don't know if we're gonna get to every single thing that I discussed at the beginning of this video because I really do want to get a video out and we might just have to finish the, the rest of the stuff up in another video. But today, before I leave, I at least want to get this barrel or I don't even, the IBC tote installed, have gutters up so this thing can at least start collecting rainwater. We're supposed to be raining for the next few days here. So it's a perfect time to do this. Now, if you plan on doing a rainwater collection system, whether it's just for water in a garden, 
you know, having water in your shop, really whatever you want to do, the big thing you need to look out for is a nice clean tote or a barrel. So in my case, I wanted something that was going to hold a ton of water so we don't have to worry about it, you know, drying out and then no rain in the forecast. So this thing is like 300 something gallons, I'm pretty sure, which means it's going to hold a ton of water. We picked this up from a uh, water treatment plant and the biggest thing you want to look out for is to find out what kind of chemicals were previously stored in this since we are going to be washing our hands with this. Don't plan on drinking it, but still, we don't want something super hazardous. As you can tell, we still have a little bit of stuff draining out and this is actually a defoaming agent, which is like a silicone. It's not hazardous. It's okay for human consumption in small amounts, which means we are going to have to flush it out a little bit, but anything that's kind of left over in the tank is not going to be dangerous or harmful, which is great. But with that being said, we have the tank. I'm going to put it over there behind the shop so it's out of the way, and then we do have to route some gutters to it. Now, I want to elevate this. That way we have a little bit of head pressure, some of that natural gravity feeding the pump, and then the pump's gonna put out about 50 PSI so we can actually have some garden hoses and stuff out here beside the shop. So first things first, while the ground is wet, we're gonna go over here behind the shop, put some posts in the ground, concrete them in, and start building a base. This thing is gonna be extremely heavy once it's full with water, probably upwards of like, you know, 700, 800 pounds, who knows? So we gotta make sure these posts are very secure. Luckily, it's a nice rainy day, which should give us no issues back here to build a base. But that's enough talking. Let's grab the tote, bring it over here, and start working on our base. At this point, it is time to start getting creative on how to get this water tank up there. This is about five feet tall, which is a little bit taller than I kind of anticipated, but looking at it, I think it's gonna work out really good because we can box this in and use underneath here kind of as a storage shed. So I don't have anybody here to help me. I have to get this, which weighs about 100 and, 100 and something pounds empty up on there. So this is definitely a job for two people, but we're gonna try to make it work. I think it should. I don't see anything that could possibly go wrong here. That kind of worked, but in the wrong way. Yesterday, I was able to finish up the rainwater collection system, and I'm glad I did because we had a huge storm roll through. And as you can tell, the tank is practically full. It's like at three quarters and it was only three hours of rain last night. So I did put gutters on this side of the shop, 40 feet of gutters all leading into this one tank, three hours of rain. That is amazing. Now the next step is to plumb this, run a pump, a filter, and find a way to recirculate it so this water doesn't become super stagnant and nasty. Unfortunately, I do not think we have enough time to knock that out in this video. I'm getting ready to head out and I definitely don't see myself plumbing all this, getting the pump installed, plus knocking out all of those other shop grades in this video, leaving tomorrow, so it's just not gonna happen. So I think we're gonna have to do a part two into this video soon, and when I get back, finish up the shop upgrades, and then start going back into the Jeep content. I have a lot of stuff to install, a lot of stuff to test out, and I do wanna start hitting some other local trails around here. So thanks for watching, guys. Like always, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, go down to the comments and let me know what you guys wanna see next, because Honestly, there's so much to do. I just want to make sure that I'm putting out content that you guys want to watch. That's going to be it for this video, guys. I will see you guys later.